Okay, so let's see. This says, would you speak a little about older women, say 56? I'm not comfortable going online into dating sites. What do you think about matchmaking services? Any thoughts? I'm a widow, new to all this. I am tech savvy, but not comfortable with going out with endless strings of men. <laughs> now, Wendy went on 121 dates. So <laughs> I do not recommend that for anyone, including myself, by the way. <laughs> right. I took one for the team. Yeah. Here's my thought on this. First of all, 56, in my mind, I'm 53. I feel like you're still relatively young. I recognize everything we can say relatively. But I can tell you this, that I have many clients in their 50s, 60s, who are meeting great men online. Now, that having been said, if you're a widow, new to all this, and you're just not ready for that, I think the first place to start would be to explore some opportunities in just increasing your opportunities to be around people and socialize and just getting out there and start meeting more people just so you start feeling a little bit more comfortable with some of those initial meetings and just conversing with people in a casual way. Because I think it can feel, if you've been married for a long time, you say you're a widow and you may have been married for a while. I think it can be hard sometimes to jump right in with online dating. That having been said, Wendy and I are both big advocates of online dating because it allows you the opportunity to meet people that you would never otherwise meet. And you actually can take, depending on how you refine that process, you actually can have a lot of control in how you use those tools so that you can use them really effectively for yourself. What do you want to add to that, Wendy? The thing I recommend is once you are willing to start meeting people in real life, and I know this might sound like a total stretch, but it's it's just an outing where you talk to people. There are speed dating events in bigger towns where it's done by age group, so you would actually know that you're there meeting men that are age appropriate for you that want to be meeting you. And I would recommend that type of event, whether it be ca- more casual or more sit down and and chat for 10 minutes apiece just to get your feet wet, just to start practicing talking to strangers, having conversations with strangers. Might as well try it out on somebody, right? Um, I do not recommend um, a lot of the bigger uh, matchmakers. I like the big companies like It's Just Lunch and uh, Table of Six. I'm not a fan. I'm not a fan. I'm not a Mm -hmm. fan. They have international horrible, horrible reputations. So what you want to do is when you think you want to join something, do not let your heart lead the way. You want to let your your brain lead the way, and the first place you want to go is to a review site like Yelp or one of those types of event, uh, uh, review sites where you can see, honest to God, real reviews. Like, for example, if you want and it's just lunch in San Francisco, you would see hundreds and hundreds of one-star reviews. Now, no matchmaker is going to have a perfect score, especially when it comes to love. So you'll have some hit and miss with some good matchmakers, but look at your reviews, get a real source if you're going to go in that direction. Don't just pick from an advertisement. Yeah, and I also have had clients that prior to coming to me have spent a lot of money on matchmaking services and up to this point and I'm sure there are cases where they've worked but up to this point I haven't met anyone or talked to anyone that that's worked really well for so my general impression at least at this point is not the most favorable one. Yeah I I know some really great matchmakers who have a lot of marriages under their belt but they're few and far between. Okay here's another one. I'm an attractive 50s age woman I have a professional career, and I've done well for myself, but I keep meeting these guys on match that are more about hooking up than a real relationship. They will sell you all the BS and then break your heart. Please help. What I want to say about that is um, I don't know if you're doing reaching out or if you're waiting for guys to reach out to you, but I, I've never once, out of my 121 first states, I never once asked a guy out, never. But I reached out to almost 80% of the men online that I dated because that's where the quality comes in when you do the picking. And once you have found men that you resonate, that are like you, that are interesting, reach out with two or three lines of interest. You like 
horses? Me too. Where do you ride? Uh, or whatever connection you can make with them just to let them know out of the sea of 25 million people, hi, I'm over here, and if you want me, come get me. Do some version mm-hmm. of that. Yeah. When I work with my clients, we actually create a whole online and offline plan because I believe there's value in having your feet in both camps to yep. some extent. And I work with my clients specifically. I really think there's an art to online dating, and I think it can be a very hard, miserable, discouraging, disheartening experience if you don't have some support and really have kind of a plan for how you make those tools work effectively for you. Unfortunately, I don't have time to go into a lot of detail about that, but one thing I will tell you with my clients, I often, we will go online together, become your virtual wing woman. We will go online together and we will go through profiles and then I help my clients craft an initial message, which is more or less a very short, sweet, simple message, making a little comment or asking a little tiny question about something that we see on their profile or in one of their pictures. And it might be something as simple as, wow, you've been to Machu Picchu? I've always wanted to go there. That's it. It's literally the online version of giving someone a smile and making eye contact from across the room. It's that simple. And I find that if you use the sites in those ways, then it can become really, really empowering and it doesn't feel so icky, and you become more of the screener. Yes. It can become really juicy. Michelle and I do the same thing, and I'm wondering, Michelle, if you have the same attitude that I do, because we sound very much aligned, that winking and all that, no go, right? Mm-hmm. I just think there's so much of that that goes on. First of all, I think you want to be the proactive chooser to some extent, even though you want to stay in the feminine role, all you're doing is inviting a conversation. You're not saying, hey, baby, do you want to have lunch sometime? You're just saying, hey, hi, I saw your picture, you know, at Machu Picchu. That's amazing. I've always wanted to go there. It's almost like something you might say to someone if you were standing there talking to them at a party. It's just an invitation to converse, but you're choosing who you're opening the conversations with And then you don't have to feel like you have to sift through all the weird or dirty or icky messages. (laughs) Half your age, twice your age. Right, right. Right, exactly. I like to position you with online dating in a way that empowers you, and I think it makes it a lot more fun. And again, this is a whole other conversation that we could go into much more depth with, but I am hoping that might help just a little bit. 